Welcome YouTube. Uh, this is my first vlog. Um, I think it'll be useful to quite a few riders out there, both beginning and intermediate and maybe even advanced. Uh, hopefully this the quality ends up being pretty good. I think it will be. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna see. I don't know if I'll continue to do these. I guess I'll just wait see what the response is like from the viewers. Uh, anyway, just a brief intro. Uh, I'm going to actually pipe in some good uh, engine sounds as well because I'm not a big fan for the, of the vlogs that are silent except for the voice. I want you all to be able to hear uh, the bike and just the uh, surrounding environment. My steed for today is my pride and joy. Triumph Speed Triple, definitely the most fun motorcycle I have ever owned or even ridden. And I've ridden quite a few over the years. I've got about 120,000, 130,000 miles under my belt. So I've uh, been on the road a while and I, I really enjoy a variety of motorcycles. But this one from a sheer just insane fun standpoint, it's tough to beat. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to gear up and get going here in a second. Alright everyone, here we go, um, out riding. Essentially what's going to happen here, I've, uh, I've been riding a long time. I'll be honest, uh, I'm not going to say I'm the best rider on the road. Uh, I'm not an MSF coach, but I've ridden a lot of different motorcycles in a lot of different environments. I've ridden in heavy, heavy duty uh, California traffic. And I've ridden mountain roads for pretty much my entire riding career. In fact, I used to live in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I literally rode Deals Gap probably two or three times a week for about four years. So that's a lot of, a lot of curves. It's a lot of good riding experience. Of course, I've done track days. Um, so I'm not going to say I'm an expert and that what I say during this uh, vlog here is the absolute end-all be-all of motorcycle safety, but I've picked up a lot of things over the years. Hey, and um, I want to share them with you. I, I'm hoping that you'll learn quite a bit from this and you'll be a safer rider when you're done watching it. I'm hoping I can edit it down to maybe 10 minutes in length, 12 minutes, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ride. It's a beautiful day. It's October. I'm, I live in Athens, Georgia, which is just a gorgeous location. And um, I'm just going to go for a ride, and I'm going to talk you through what I'm doing on my ride to stay safe. And by doing that, instead of just telling you what you should do and talking about it like they do in the MSF, and I've taken the MSF and it's great, but there's some things they don't talk about. Uh, I think the MSF, at least the beginner's course, talks more about preparing you to be a rider, how to operate a motorcycle, how to make the turns, how to, um, you know, choose your lane position, things that are essential to being a, a pretty safe rider when you first go out. But they can't cover everything, it's only a couple days. And so I've picked up some things that I feel are very helpful in keeping you safe. And so I'm going to talk about those. Um, I'm running through Watkinsville, Georgia right now, south of Athens. Not as much traffic down here. I'm going to work up to the traffic. We're going to do some mild traffic right now and then work up to heavier traffic. But we're going to do a little country roads in between because, let's be honest, that's a lot more fun than riding traffic. So what I'm doing right now, I'm staying in the left-hand side of my lane. I'm staying back from this SUV in front of me, giving him plenty of space, keeping an eye on the light. I'm checking this intersection as I go through it to make sure nobody's about to blow through the intersection. Very, very rarely will I ever accelerate through an intersection. Usually I am coasting and I've got my, my fingers on the front brake. 
That is because intersections are inherently very dangerous for a motorcyclist. Um, left hand turns, where the car, like one of these cars, if it was in the turn lane with the signal on, would be about to make a left hand turn. A left hand turn in front of a motorcyclist accounts for almost 50% of accidents. And a lot of times they're really bad accidents. And so that is just something, it's all about, it's all a numbers game. If, when you get on your motorcycle, when you become a motorcyclist and you become addicted like I am and like millions of others are to the freedom and just the, the sheer exhilaration of power of a motorcycle, uh, you're also, you're playing a numbers game because statistically you are far more likely to be seriously injured or killed when you're on your motorcycle compared to a car, an airplane, or a host of other transportation options. But the good news is you can, you can stack the odds more in your favor by knowing the situations that are more dangerous and avoiding them or being very uh, cautious, being a very alert motorcyclist. I mean, obviously, if you have a bike, you're going to want to go out and have fun. You're not always going to go the speed limit. You're not always going to obey every traffic law. But there's a time and place to do that. And generally, the time and place does not involve other cars being around you. Because other cars are a huge wild card. You don't know they're, what they're going to do. And so you don't want to be speeding, weaving, not signaling, riding aggressively in traffic. All it takes is a lane change without them signaling or some other uh, unforeseen incident to really put a damper in your day. So I'm out riding here, starting to get into the country roads, checking my mirrors constantly. And I've got a car behind me. And this here is where I'll make a decision on how comfortable I am with that car behind me. Notice also when cars are coming towards me, like these huge trucks and everything, I just kind of move over to the right hand side. Okay, I, I give myself a little room. If somebody's texting, and they hit a mild curve, they don't look up right away, they'll come over that double yellow. You see it all the time. Well, do I want to be hugging that double yellow? No. I want to give myself some space to react if they are going to be coming over into my lane. And so I will do that. However, when there aren't cars coming towards me, generally I'll hug the middle of the road or the, the left hand side, I guess, of my lane. And that is because animals, in particular deer, especially here in Georgia, are another serious cause for concern in my mind. There's lots of deer motorcyclist accidents that occur and they scare me more than cars honestly. You can usually see a car a ways off unless it just comes out of the woods on a dirt road and just blows through a stop sign. You're going to be able to see a car way off and identify it as a threat. But deer, they will come out of nowhere. They're almost invisible, especially at dusk and dawn, which are probably the most uh, high risk times to ride, uh, especially in the fall during the rut. And so that car is gone now from behind me, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. And uh, so that's why I'll hug the left-hand side. Right now, okay, got wide fields, feel pretty good about it. But I, ta I take advantage of being on a motorcycle. I mean, yes, a motorcycle puts me at a disadvantage as far as I don't have a cage around me to protect me in the event of an accident. But I also have a great deal of maneuverability. I can squeeze through spots that other vehicles can't. And I can take advantage of the lane positioning as well to buy myself a split second to react. That split second 
it could make a big difference in uh, how things go. So that is, that is something that I just encourage you to think about. I rarely will ride in the middle of the lane. When it's wet out, the middle of the rain is slick, it's not, it's full of oil and all types of other crap. And the other thing, and I'll try to point this out a little later, if I get the situation, I see this all the time. It just makes me nervous when I see it. And that's when a motorcyclist follows a car pretty closely and they follow them like this. This is a bad spot to be in when you are following traffic. That is because cars are not thinking about you usually, unless it's a motorcyclist in that car and he'll probably think about you. And they will straddle crap in the road. They'll go right over it. And you cannot see it. You are absolutely blind to that crap in the road. If there's several cars in front of you, you're not going to be able to see, especially if you're following them closely. I take a left here. It's a nice, uh, nice ride through here. This is the Georgia Piedmont, basically just south of the Appalachians. Yeah, I'm going to get on it a little here. That's fun. That never gets old. And I'm going to back off back down to the speed limit. That right there is a perfect example of you can play, you can have fun, but you also have to respect your surroundings and recognize threats. And in my mind, threats are generally cars and animals. Those are your two biggest threats. For a lot of motorcyclists, threats are themselves. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, there's some motorcyclists out there that probably shouldn't be on the road or need to get, keep their ego in check. But um, anyway, what was I talking about? I don't even know. That's what happens when I try to talk and ride, keep an eye on my surroundings. Essentially, I was talking about just staying safe out here I'm feeling pretty good here this is a place where you can enjoy yourself it's wide open fields you can take off a little here if you want to I'm not a big speeder that's why I love this speed triple so damn much I mean this bike is absolutely perfect for my current riding style and that is super torquey off the line just a beast but not built for high speed it's naked it doesn't it's not terribly aerodynamic it's got these huge all this front headlights and so it is ideal for my kind of ride some people like to take it up to 100 150 miles an hour that's just not really my style anymore I used to have super sports race the track and do that and you know what I'm not I don't want to leave out any motorcyclists right here this is where my little radar goes up lots of spots for deer to come out so notice I'm not speeding real bad I'm keeping it right at the speed limit not accelerate now here after I get through this uh, little intersection I can open up a little if I want to feel a little bit of acceleration I can open up now I see a car so I'm gonna bring it back down a little I'm, maybe I've been lucky I haven't gotten a speeding ticket in probably eight years and uh, I definitely go out and have my fun on the back roads but it's just identifying where to go and have your fun but I don't want to leave out any motorcyclists if you're watching this and you ride a cruiser you know more power to you I, I enjoy cruisers they have their place in my mind as far as my style of ride I just want to go out and relax and just slowly eat up those curves and just enjoy the day. Cruiser is tough to beat. It's so comfortable. It's like you're in a big lazy boy. Um, and then of course there's the uh, the standards and the super sport, everything. You can see this is just such a beautiful day. Uh, this here, I uh, see. So I'm off, off the accelerator, and I'm covering the brake. I'm assuming he doesn't see me. And what I was doing right there is I was watching his front wheel and his face. I was looking back and forth between his eyes and his front wheel. Eyes to see if he has seen me and identified me. And front wheels, because you can usually tell by the spokes of the front wheel faster than any other spot on the car if it is rolling forward at all. And 
I'm going to assume that if it is rolling forward slightly, that he is about to pull out. And so I'm going to keep that brake covered and be ready to slam. That was a bad situation. I would have been in a bad situation if he had pulled out because there was an oncoming car. I couldn't have swerved around him. So I would have just had to panic brake and hope he saw me before he pulled all the way out. And I mean, right there, of course, this is just the real world. This is not scripted, but that was a perfect example of uh, when sometimes things just don't go your way and you can be as safe as possible. But if you pulled out in front of me, I would all I could have relied on was really strong braking and hoping that he saw me before he pulled all the way out. But uh, anyway, some statistics, things to think about. If you're on a super sport motorcycle, fastest motorcycles out there, uh, you are four times more likely to be killed in an accident. That's just the, the fact of the matter. Probably a lot of different um, factors come into play there. Generally younger buyers, a lot of times buyers that get over their heads and don't, uh, they don't start off and build their skills. They just jump right into a leader bike that has insane power with weight ratio. Notice here, I'm kind of staying more to the right hand side. That's because most likely animals would come from the left here. So I'm just by myself that extra couple of feet. But uh, if you're on a sport bike, so not a super sport, probably something like I'm on, uh, you're two times more likely compared to the general motorcycle population. So just keep that in mind. That doesn't mean you're on an inherently less safe motorcycle. It means that the population of people that buy those motorcycles are probably, one, greater risk takers, two, possibly less experienced. They're young, they want something fast, they want to go out and ride fast, and they don't necessarily identify dangerous situations or they just don't care because they have that I'm immortal attitude so just keep those things in mind um, you could certainly change those statistics tremendously based on how you ride nice and open here this is where I could really get on it if I wanted to there's a uh, stop sign you know what let's see if this truck moves Stop sign out in the middle of nowhere, middle of the country. That is a nice, nice thing for a speed triple rider. Um, that is something speed triple riders enjoy coming across. And that's because it is so damn easy to just kind of pull out and pull the front wheel up. And yeah, I know there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of irony here where I'm giving I'm lecturing you on how to be a safe motorcycle rider and I'm doing a little wheelie but again it is all about your situation I'm not gonna do that in traffic that's stupid 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 I see the videos of people out on the interstate doing stand-up wheelies in traffic idiots they go out in the interstate and do stand-up wheelies with nobody around all right they're just gonna hurt themselves and chances are they're not it's not going to be a severe life-threatening injury it's going to be some terrible road rash but when you do it in traffic and the car behind you can't stop in time after you loop it and you get run over that is a lot worse than road rash so you just have to keep these things in mind when you ride it is a beautiful day out it is about 70 to 72 degrees sunny leaves are just starting to change here just starting to change and uh, this month coming up in my mind is the best month of riding believe you me I will be up in the mountains shortly I thought about doing it today it's only about an hour's ride from Athens which is great to get into the North Georgia mountains which in my mind is some of the best riding in the entire eastern United States in fact I think it does I think it's hard to debate it uh, I used to love Deals Gap, but Deals Gap is freaking circus now. And unless you go on a weekday and an off season, you're going to deal with a bunch of idiots riding over their heads. Uh, big egos. I'm talking a lot, aren't I? Beautiful day. Well, another, another uh, little statistic for you, something to think about, is drinking. 
top of fatal motorcycle accidents, the rider had alcohol in their system. That right there, that says a whole lot. So if you don't drink, you are statistically much better off right there. So let's break down some of these things that I've talked about. If you don't drink, you ride based on the situation you're in, and you change your lane position, you change your speed, you proactively prepare to brake by covering the front brake, that is going to make a big difference. In the fall, don't ride or avoid riding dusk, dawn, nighttime, because there's lots of deer. This right here, this area, these trees close to the road, this is got my radar going. I kind of call it my antenna or my safety radar. It's where I, my mind identifies situations that are hazardous to my health and I change how I'm riding accordingly. Um, so it's a numbers game as far as statistics. Now statistics can be misleading, all right? Uh, do I always gear up fully for rides? Look, I'm wearing blue jeans. Is that the best idea? Probably not. I mean, I'll rash up my legs pretty bad if I go down. So, but when I'm going on shorter rides, a lot of times I'll just wear blue jeans. I still wear gloves, I got a full face helmet, I got a jacket with armor, I got my riding boots. But I'm going to uh, sometimes kind of cheat and wear blue jeans. And yeah, people spout out the statistics about most accidents are what, like two miles from your home, three miles from your home. Well, that's when statistics can kind of be misleading. I mean, that's like a, a course that would be the most frequently, the most frequent place you would have an accident because that is the starting off point for pretty much everyone. That is where you'll start your ride and end your ride. So you're going to be at your home, close to your home, for a vast majority of your rides, you know, day in and day out. It's really about the miles traveled in my mind and perhaps your riding environment. i got to scratch my nose here and open the shield. And your riding environment. If I'm going to go up to the mountains, hit the curves all day, I'm going to be geared head to toe. If I'm going to go on a long ride, be out all day, variety of situations, geared head to toe. Because the sheer number of miles traveled that day is much greater than like what I'm doing right now for this vlog. And so therefore I'm going to play the numbers game and I'm going to cover myself head to toe. Now I come around this curve and there's oil all over the road and I got no place to go and I go down, then that's the risk I'm taking, that's the risk I've accepted. But that's part of our lives. That's part of our lives as motorcyclists. All right, another stop sign, but there's houses around here. Notice how I'm, uh, you don't really need to do this to a stop sign, but when you're taking curves, it is really nice. Uh, it sounds good. And that is rev matching. I'll do it right here. I'm going to take a right. Right here. Uh, slow car. Actually, I'm only in second gear, so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But rev matching is really essential when you're riding curvy roads. Uh, the new bikes have slipper clutches. And so I guess you don't have to do it all the time. But man, it sounds good. What's rev matching? It takes a little practice, but essentially you blip the right hand throttle and you downshift. And if you get good at it, when you blip the throttle, you will, well, while the clutch is pulled in, of course, during your downshift, you will uh, bring the revs up to what the gear that you're downshifting into, what those revs would be once that gear is engaged. And so it's seamless. It doesn't upset the chassis at all. It doesn't upset the suspension. See this guy? I'm gonna move over. I'm gonna have to assume that he might pull out and not see me coming. I gotta give myself some room and an out. I was safe there. I could pull left into the median. So, anyway, and he did pull out. He's behind me now. 
So rev matching is really nice. Plus, it, God, it sounds so damn good. But when you're going through the curves, it's essential, in my mind, if you want to make steady, smooth progress through the curves, to be able to rev match because you won't upset the suspension as you go down. So when you pull the stop sign, you don't really need to, but I'm going to do it right now. So notice how I'm hitting the gears. And you could do it while you're braking too. I've gotten pretty good at that over the years. But that takes more practice because you're pulling the brake in while you're rev matching. All right, so here's some traffic traffic. Kind of higher speed highway. So this is a little different situation. It's divided though. I'm gonna run it out here. Sorry, that's just, uh, you know, Nobody around, wide open road. I guess if a cop had pulled up at that light back there and saw me take off, he could nab me for exhibition of speed, but you know, you got some speed. It's okay to exhibit it every once in a while. But I'm not gonna do that in traffic. Cars are the enemy, cages if you want to call them that. And uh, so are animals. For a while I used to think cars were kind of, would keep animals out of my way, but I've kind of changed my mind on that. I, I feel like deer are so unpredictable that this, even this huge truck in front of me, it's not going to clear the way. A deer could still jump out after that truck goes by and ruin my day. So notice, I'm not going to get up real close on this, this tr tractor trailer. And notice also, I'm definitely not going to get in the center of the lane, because this tractor trailer could going slow so I'm gonna pass him. How I'm gonna pass him? I'm gonna get way over. Don't really like tractor trailers too much. I'm gonna give myself some room in case he changes lanes into me. He doesn't have any real reason to here. And so here I'm gonna take advantage of my power to weight ratio and I'm gonna go by him real quick. And so I'm minimizing the time that I'm in his blind spot. Now, some people would say, yeah, go by your normal speed, you're accelerating, your momentum is changing forward, it's going to take you longer to brake. Well, I would prefer to get past him and not just be going past him at two miles an hour over his speed. Basically because I feel like the biggest threat from a semi is them not seeing you emerging over to you. So I don't want to be next to him for very long at all. Alright, so I'm going a little over the speed limit here, but I'm trying to catch up to these cars. I want to introduce some other situations here that are particularly, I guess, dangerous. So I'm going to kind of come up here, the rev match here, get into a gear that's appropriate. Nice thing about a speed triple though, honestly, I know you're probably sick of hearing me talk about my bike, but is that I could I could be in any gear. I could be in six gear the whole damn time. 20 miles an hour up to 160 miles an hour if I wanted. Uh, because it's so torquey. God, this engine just wants to go. Alright, so I'm not getting on his ass. Don't get his, on his ass. It pisses them off. It kind of hurts our reputation as motorcyclists. Alright, kind of getting in this guy's blind spot, but if he merged over right then, I'd be okay, because I wasn't right next to him. Notice how I'm getting past these people. I'm not going to sit in a blind spot. Now I got somebody on my ass right now. I'd hate that, so I'm going to let him by. And I'm going to stay in a spot where I can see ahead. I've got some wiggle room. Alright, now it's open, so I'm going to get back over all the way pretty quickly. I'm not going to meander, take my time in the middle of the lane just in case this car straddled something. And I'm leaving myself lots of space, lots of good space in both behind and in front. If somebody comes up behind you and they're riding your ass and it makes you uncomfortable, pull over and let them by. And if uh, you 
can't if you're on a two-lane road. I've done this many times, many times. Instead of speeding up, maybe it's dusk, maybe it's deer season, maybe it's heavily wooded, maybe I don't want to go 15 miles an hour over to stay ahead of the car and keep them off my ass. I feel like that's very unsafe. I'll just pull off. I'll signal clearly and I will pull off on a little side road and let him go by. To me, I'm not worried about it. And if he feels like, oh, look at this slow motorcyclist, I'm faster than him, whatever. He can feel that way. He can think that way. So, other thing that I do all the time when I'm coming to a stop is I check my mirrors. Check my mirrors. So, the reason why is sometimes people don't see it and they don't see the light. And if it's nighttime, if you're drinking, they might blow right through that light. And if you're sitting there, they'll blow right into you. So, I leave it in gear and I check my mirrors until the car behind me has come to a complete stop and I know that he's coming to a stop. He's coming up on me fast because I'm watching my mirror once I'm at that light. If he's coming up on me fast, I'm ready to go. I'm going to shift over to the left. I'm going to shift over to the right. Hell, I'll punch it through the damn uh, intersection if I have to, assuming no cross traffic is coming. Another thing that really is scary for motorcyclists, and I'm sitting here in the left-hand lane, but nobody's coming up on me, so that's why I'm doing it. I've got a lot of space. I can go left in the median and tumble and not get any rash if I have to. And i got a lot of space to the right as well. So, real good uh, kind of safety cocoon around me. But here's another thing you really need to think about. You're not going to be able to see me do here in this video too well because the camera's facing forward. And that is, this is a dangerous, dangerous activity for a motorcyclist. That's when you turn off a relatively fast street, like a 45 mile an hour, 55 mile an hour street, into a side street or a driveway. You don't want, all right, the traffic behind me is starting to kind of close in. So I'm just going to kind of come over. I don't want to go much faster than this. So I'm going to come over and just sit in this lane. And if they want to come by me, they can. Um, you need to signal. You need to signal way in advance. And you also, and I do this constantly, some motorcycles have this, they add it as a modification. I click my brakes a bunch of times, either with my rear brake, my front brake, really, really fast. And by doing that, it signals my, it basically blinks my brake light over and over again to get their attention. It's all about getting their attention so that they know what you're doing, that you're coming to a stop or, a, or you're slowing down substantially in order to uh, in order to make a turn. And you don't want them coming up on you. And so here's the other thing that I do when I'm turning and I've got somebody behind me. I watch my mirrors. I watch my mirrors all the way to the turn. And if they're not slowing down to my satisfaction, I go through the turn. I don't make the turn. I can't stress that enough. That is just absolutely for the sake of your well-being, the sake of your spine, from a 4,000 pound vehicle coming in behind you at 30, 40 miles an hour. Um, absolutely a best practice. You can always come back around to make that turn. But I try, the, the scariest part is when I'm I'm out on a ride and I'm going new places and I don't know, I mean, I don't have a GPS on my handlebars or anything like that. And so I'm out there going for a ride and street names come up on me fast. I can't read them until they're right there. Well, if somebody's behind me, I'll probably have to go past it. I'll turn around and come back. I'm not going to slam my brakes. I mean, I could make the turn. I got good brakes. Uh, we have good braking ratio on these car, on these motorcycles. Uh, only equaled or exceeded by high-performance sports cars certainly not by SUVs and I got somebody behind me kind of on my butt so I'm gonna keep a close eye on him right now so uh, anyway it's signaling your braking and turning is absolutely essential all right so this is kind of boring so I'll probably just edit this part out. I'm going to get into different, different situations, different traffic situations here in a minute.
All right, so here we go. I'm about to get into a little more traffic area, your typical urban setting. And uh, so we're gonna talk a little more. I really wanna open it up here, but I got these cars in front of me. That's all right. That's just uh, part of dealing with cages. A lot of times they're in your way. Nothing good about cages ever when you're out riding. Unless one of them's bringing you uh, maybe a, I don't even know. All right, so here we go. We got a semi right there. Definitely don't like semis. They're big, they can't brake very fast. So I'm gonna keep him behind me way behind me. I'm going to accelerate and get a little closer here. Another thing I don't like right here, this van, left hand turns. Pretty safe though. Generally pretty safe. I had a car next to me and a car in front of me. And so what that means is this mass of vehicles that I was a part of is highly visible. And so I'm not going to worry too much about a left hand turn. Um, I got that got that semi way in my rear view now so I'm not too worried about it. But I'm going to come up into some traffic here, some traffic lights, and I'm just going to again talk to you about the things that are going through my mind to keep me safe. Notice still, I'm not going to tailgate. I understand sometimes, like if you live in LA, you cannot create a separation like I'm creating right now between my motorcycle and that uh, Acura SUV. Somebody's just going to dart right in between you. So you just have to do, you have to create the safest situation that you can given your environment, given the vehicles that are around you, how they're driving, etc. So that's just, um, you know, it's very situational. So I'm going to go around this guy, I'm getting way over to the left, just in case they don't see me, creating cushion, because if they start to merge over, if they're on their phone, if they don't check their mirrors, then I want to be able to react. I either need, if I'm halfway past them, I'm going to keep accelerating through, and if I'm not quite to their door, I'm going to hit the brakes if I start seeing them come over. And between the padding I've given them and the capabilities of my bike, I should be okay. So that person, not, not a huge threat, could merge out, probably not because there's a car next to me. But I got a huge cushion there. Kind of smoky here, must be a fire. Alright, so now we're getting into some more traffic here. the first stops I've come to. I've had a couple others. It's been a pretty smooth ride so far. All right, another thing I'm not going to do, get right on their ass. I'm not going to get right on their ass. Basically because it's, um, it's just, it doesn't make them feel comfortable when you're right on their ass. They're uh, talking kind of larks, their windows are down, they're looking back at me. Yep. Give me the thumbs up. I'm sure on bikes, doesn't matter what you're on, you get a lot of attention. It's kind of nice at times, but other times it, when they're wanting to race you and everything, it gets to be kind of old. But uh, anyway, I try not to get right on their bumper. I know that it's not going to hurt anything, but at the same time, it makes them uncomfortable. And I think as motorcyclists, we have an image that is negative in a lot of ways, especially uh, sport bikes. Uh, sport bikes are generally thought of as hooligans, just want to go out and ride fast everywhere, don't really care about anybody else. And um, I try to do what I can to not fit into that stereotype. And yeah, I go out and have fun, but I do it away from everybody. I wish more would do that. All right, so now we're getting into the uh, west side of Athens. Very developed area. Lots of college students here, of course, UGA. So you got a lot of people texting, Facebooking, talking on their phones, not paying attention. And check them 
my mirror here coming to a stop cars are way behind me don't really have a whole lot of out here because there's a car but you better believe if somebody's come up fast i'm gonna slide right to the left right between the curb and that truck but i got a bike behind me he's not gonna run into me it's like an fjr jr 1300 all right so i'm gonna go through another couple situations here haven't really gotten to a whole lot of left-hand turn. Uh, see that guy almost is almost merging into the car in front of him. I'm going to give him a lot of space because he's trying to make this turn onto the loop. That just, I mean, that happens all the time. You all know it. You're out there riding. Well, I don't know if this is going to happen during this ride, but let me talk about it. Because the left-hand turn, I mean, what was the statistic I told you? About 50% of accidents and they're nasty accidents usually involve a car turning left in front of you if i see that as a possibility if it is just me on the road and there's a car in the turn lane about to turn i do this yeah it looks a little weird and the car probably is wondering what's wrong with me a lot of people out today on bikes probably because it's so nice out probably wondering what's wrong with me but I want them to see me and they didn't teach me that in the MSF I just kind of did it it's just something I thought naturally would be make me more visible because they don't turn left in front of you because they want to kill you they turn left in front of you because they can't see you or they don't see you you're not big enough to register in their peripheral vision and they're distracted and so they just make that turn and ruin your day so things I've done other things I've done I will flash my high beams I don't do that as much though I don't want the driver to assume I'm telling him to go ahead and go by flashing my high beams so I have found again somebody's making a left-hand turn at an intersection on a normal road and they have their they're in that turn lane or they are just in the lane with their signal going showing they're going to turn i am off my accelerator i'm covering my front brake and i am doing this i am making myself i want them to look at me and think what in the hell is that guy doing is there something wrong with him because that means they have recognized me they see me and uh i am visible to them so I, I, I can't express that enough. That is one of the most important things that you can do. Uh, I don't think I've seen this guy around before. There's a lot of people here in Athens though, so that doesn't mean I've seen. He's got something bungee to the back. Let's see, not beer though. Uh, it's just Mountain Dew. Uh, I've bungeed a beer too my time, but I don't drink it and ride. All right, so slower traffic, got an out. Don't want to be in their blind spot though. So I'm gonna get through that. All right, left-hand turn, but I feel safe. There's lots of vehicles around me. But again, if I'm thinking that this is a dangerous situation, I am off covering the brake and then I'm gonna weave too. I want to give them every chance to see me. All right, checking my mirrors things are looking good and I pop my shield and I am almost done with this vlog getting close to home here yeah this guy he's got a jacket on but he's also wearing shorts <laughs> so we're gonna give him a C maybe a D plus on safety but you know again what can I say jeans Maybe at 5 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour to protect me some, but probably not going to do a great job at 30 or 40 miles an hour. Alright, trying to think of some other tips that I've picked up on. I think those are the key ones, the ones that they might or might not talk about in MSF. I thought about doing a second video on riding curves, curvy roads, for you people in Florida, 
that means and I, this is definitely a spot where I got to be careful this is an area where cars will merge over to this lane because this lane becomes left hand only and so they won't see me so I do not I do not want to be next to a car here so he doesn't come over to me um, there right here that's the type thing that a car would straddle right there and if it's something solid in that bag and you hit it at 40 miles an hour with your front wheel that could put you off maybe in a tank slapper or worse so got to be able to see ahead of you on the road got to look up ahead all right but uh anyway if this video is met with a lot of positive response, if you feel like you got a lot out of it, I, you know, I'm always looking for an excuse to go to the mountains. I could go up and uh, do kind of a curvy road vlog and uh, essentially talk about how to ride in the curves within your limits and your comfort zone but do it smoothly and improve your skills am i a qualified track day instructor no i'm not am i the fastest guy on the track if we went out and did a track day nope but a lot of that has to do with self-preservation and how far you're willing to push yourself and your motorcycle i push myself far enough to enjoy the ride to get a little adrenaline going but I don't push to the limit it's not worth it to me and a lot of guys would say it's not worth it to them after their first big crash but uh, anyway we'll see if you all want me to do that or not I'm not sure I'm gonna be a regular vlogger I just kind of like to get out and ride and having a camera on my helmet I can kind of feel the drag honestly talking the whole time it's probably not something i'm going to want to do see that guy he's probably on his damn phone lots of space there um, so it's not something i'm going to do all the time but if you all learned some stuff and got something out of this enjoyed it then i'm certainly not opposed to doing a few more it's kind of my way to give back the motorcycle community has been so nice to me over the years very very generous in a variety of different situations and so you know this is a way to give something back to the motorcycling community and who knows if one viewer out there who watches this does something uh, here's a cop here that's why you don't speed not, not in Coney County um, if one person watches something learns it and does it and maybe it avoids an accident injuring themselves or messing up their beautiful motorcycle then uh, good it's well worth the time that I took to go out and do this ride put it together upload it to YouTube all right notice I'm just doing a little downshift in rev matching pull in so anyway you all uh, take care and I will see you online hope you enjoyed it hope you got a lot out of it thanks a lot